I'm Ellen Fisher, a wife and mother sharing our story of our simple island life. We love all things healthy vegan eats, homeschooling, and gentle parenting. share our love of gardening and growing our own food with goals to become sustainable on our land. I share healthy vegan recipes in my ebooks filled with tips, encouragement, vibrant photography, and delicious food that you and your family can enjoy. Check them out at ellenfisher.com and also linked below. This is a topic my husband and I care a lot about. We started caring about financial responsibility when we were pretty young. Especially Andrew was taught at a young age to save your money and spend wisely, and he's always been that way. I, on the other hand, didn't start caring about this topic until a little bit later after we began dating. At first, I was into spending my paycheck on things that didn't really add value to my life. But over the years, I realized I was being wasteful and not good with my money. We started down the road of long-term goals for our lives, how to cut costs in areas that had wiggle room, and more. Then we read the book, The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey, and it really hit home for us. We followed a similar model to his book over the years and have become more and more passionate about the subject. Next, what's kind of funny is that our best friends just so happened to be really into into saving your money and financial freedom as well. So when we met a couple years ago, we totally clicked on that level and continued to bounce ideas off each other. We came from different backgrounds, yet found ourselves in the same boat of goals towards financial freedom. <laughs> this is Josefa. And this is Quinn. The stats on saving trends in America are alarming. Different sources have varying numbers, but a Northwestern Mutual study found that one in three Americans has less than $5,000 saved up for retirement, and 21% of Americans have no retirement at all. Only 1 in 10 Americans are saving more than 15% of their income towards retirement. Chris Hogan responds, that could seriously derail your retirement dream. Another study says that currently as high as 69% of Americans has less than $1,000 in savings and 34% have no savings at all. And to top it off, about 80% of American adults are in debt and it's considered the norm to spend more than you have. The general standard today is that you work until you're about 65 years old and then you get to retire. But what if you could retire earlier than that? Is that something you've ever considered an option in your life? We watched a documentary recently called Playing With Fire about financial independence and retiring early, which we found really fascinating. The consumerism culture is harmful. It it really hurts people. We are spending money we don't have to buy things we don't need to impress people we don't even know. The standard narrative doesn't make sense. We have to throw out that outdated advice and write a new rule book. People have figured out that if you save half your income, you can all of a sudden move that retirement date up from 50 years out to just 17 years out. I am financially independent at 30. It took us about nine years to save a million dollars. The shockingly simple math behind early retirement. You just see it and your life is changed forever. I sat down with Brad Barrett, a host from the podcast called Choose FI, who was featured in the documentary. They described themselves as a life optimization podcast, taking all aspects of their lives and optimizing them to reach financial independence. So I asked Brad, how old are you and how long have you been financially independent? I actually just celebrated my 40th birthday and I've been financially independent. I left my corporate job five years ago, so at 35. What are the reasons to become financially free? Taking back control in your life and getting some autonomy. What's the most valuable resource? It's your time, it's the precious decades you get on this planet. And to spend that working in a job that just simply doesn't light you up, that is the ultimate, ultimate waste. So for me, it was a fairly short and abbreviated path to FI, a 13 year working career, which when you talk to most people, a working career is four, five, six decades. For me, it was being intentional for a very short period of time and getting to a point where I can spend a month in Hawaii. I can spend time with my kids as they grow up. And ultimately, I get to decide how I spend those years. And I think that is just a magical thing. What is the difference between retiring and financial independence? Retire early, it just has these, these negative connotations of someone being unproductive or just kind of wasting their life away. Like it, it, to me, it's people playing golf or sitting on the beach sipping umbrella drinks. And that's fine, I suppose, if that's your thing. But for me, financial independence is what's important. It's taking that control back and living a life where you add value to the world and you find out what do you truly value. You can spend money as you see fit. That's the beauty of being financially independent. What advice would you give to people who feel stuck financially? So many people do feel stuck, and I think it's because they don't have any sense of where they are financially. This is the biggest thing. We get scared, we stick our heads in the sand, and we continue doing the same thing, spending money, getting into credit card debt, 
you have to get some sense of, all right, where am I today? What do I owe? What do I bring in every month? What am I spending? So to me, the advice simply is, you gotta be honest with yourself. You have to get a sense of where you are in order to come up with a plan to move forward. You need to save some money and you need to make choices, ultimately. You have to take action. When you can save that money, then you get more and more power in life. That's the beautiful thing. Think about how stressful a life is when you have no money. And think about how much better your life would be with even $2,000, $5,000 in the bank. You can weather the storm if you get a flat tire or the fridge breaks or something like that. So you just have more power and it accrues to you every step along the way towards financial independence. Why do you think people consider it hard to reach financial independence? I think people consider it difficult to reach financial independence because they have no sense of what the target is. So for most of us, we hear retirement and, and oh, you're gonna need five, 10, 15 million dollars to retire. And I don't know about you, but that scares the heck out of me. There's, there's no way I could get to 10 million dollars. I mean, that's crazy. But what we do with financial independence is we say it's control what you can control. And you have a sense of what you can spend every year. Those expenses are what drive your financial independence number. So it's a really, really simple equation. And I don't want to get into the math now, certainly, but it changes the game when it's I control what I need to retire as opposed to, oh, some guru tells me I need $10 million. So when you have a goal, you can move towards it. It's coming back to controlling what you can control and having some certainty and having a plan to move forward. There's a really great YouTube video by Matt Devella on the simple steps to financial freedom, which breaks down the basics of creating an emergency fund, getting out of debt, and then building a fully funded emergency fund of six to 12 months expenses, and then beefing up those savings. There's a couple ways to pay off your debt. So to pay off your debt, this includes everything except the house. So loans and credit cards. Paying off the debt with the highest interest rate first makes the most mathematical sense. So you pay your base payment every month for all of your debt but then all your extra income goes towards the debt with the highest interest rate. Then when that one is paid off, you move on to your next highest interest rate debt and so forth. Other than all that, an important step is to cut your spending to increase your savings. Cutting your spending makes it quicker and easier to pay off your debt and move towards financial independence. The goal is to increase the difference between what you're making and what you're spending. And then what you do with that extra money depends on your situation and desires. So how do you cut your spending to save more? Most of these tips really helped us not to dip into our savings when money was tight. Especially when we first moved to Hawaii, uh, we definitely had to live super strict on a budget. Andrew was working 40 to 50 hours a week and we bought everything secondhand. Make a budget. Personal Capital and Mint are easy free ways to add your bank and credit card info and it will tell you how much you're spending and making. Shop secondhand. I know I've said this a lot on my channel, but not only does it create a lighter footprint on the planet, it's also lighter on your wallet as well. Simply spend less. Many people find it beneficial to go on some kind of spend fast where you go period of time, typically something like six months, where you don't buy a certain thing that you're used to buying on a regular basis. It's a transformative process because you start to realize, wow, maybe I don't need a lot of this stuff. Create a minimalist mindset. Sell items in your home that you don't need and don't bring you joy. Marie Kondo's book on this topic is a good one. Cut food costs. The number one way to cut food costs is to avoid eating out and save those experiences for special occasions. Shop in bulk and get your dense calories from cheap plant foods like rice, beans, and oats. And this might sound foreign to some, but if you're on a really tight budget, avoid purchasing food items that don't add nutritional value to your diet, like fizzy drinks, coffee, and chocolate. Stick to water for your drink of choice. All that being said, when you go through your budget, some things are gonna have more value to you than other things. So you'll have to weigh out where you want to continue spending more. Andrew and I don't spend much money on social events, clothing, gear, or sports equipment like surfboards, but we do value getting the highest quality plant foods we can. So we spend more money on purchasing organic fruits and vegetables and don't cut our costs in that area. But we are working towards long-term goals of living sustainably off our land so eventually our food costs will be really low. What matters to you will define what you do and don't cut costs. Find free ways to enjoy yourself. Instead of spending money on entertainment like going to the movies, restaurants, sports games, and more, choose a date night under the stars with a home-cooked meal and family day at the beach, bike riding at the park or forest, or building snowmen if it snows where you live.
Moving on to bigger areas of spending. If you have an expensive car loan, you can sell it and buy a cheaper car. Even paying cash for a cheap car can be very beneficial. Avoid leasing cars at all costs. Leasing cars is a prime money waster. Lastly, can you change anything about your living situation, like moving into a smaller place or getting a roommate to help pay for the rent? From a psychological standpoint, using cash instead of cards helps many people spend less. And if you're having trouble knowing how much to spend, where you can pay off your bill 100% every billing cycle, then avoid the use of credit cards and stick to debit cards or cash instead. Call your phone carrier, car, and home insurance to negotiate. Get a couple quotes outside of your carrier and you'll often find a better deal. Pay attention to your subscriptions like Netflix, cable, Hulu, HBO. Do you need all four of them or could you stick to just one? Reevaluate that gym membership. Instead, you can go outside running or use free workouts on YouTube. And depending on the area you live, can you ride a bike instead of using a car? Every little bit helps. Saving $50 on a new phone bill does make a difference long term. What seems like a small adjustment is going to make a big difference with the accumulation of the more small choices that you make. All of these tips does not mean that you don't buy things that bring you joy. It doesn't mean that you never buy anything new again. It just means that you be more mindful with what you purchase, be more intentional with what you buy. Opportunity cost and intentionality go a long way. One thing that's helped me is waiting a while before deciding on a big purchase. So for instance, you've seen that we've been living in this house for like six months and I still don't have very much furniture in this house. I personally like to take a long time before deciding specifically what types of items I'm gonna buy. And I wanna make sure that what I buy is gonna last for a long time. My friends Quinn and Josefa have made some really inspiring choices in their life to get them to where they are today. So I sat down with them to record their experience so far. What was your childhood like? My childhood had some really great moments, but also had some really tough moments too. We were around a lot of drugs, gangs, violence. We didn't have a lot of money growing up, but my parents did work hard to put food on the table for us. I definitely wasn't handed my money. I got a job, I paid for my car, my house, and put myself through college. How did you get to where you are now? I really like to just spend my money. So I really had to change my mindset. Like I'm working really hard for this money. Where is it gonna go? I started reading blogs like Mr. Money Mustache and Quinn would send me podcasts. Sometimes I think like, I don't know if I can do this. Every penny that I spent was gonna either cause me to retire early or retire later. So I began making changes. We paid off our debt, which was our car note, our student loans. We dramatically cut our spending. And now we're on track to retire in 10 years, which is our financial freedom goal. What is your number one tip for financial freedom? I think the number one tip I end up telling people is to stay flexible. So many times, and then we've done this in our own lives, we get used to a certain lifestyle. We get used to things being a certain way. Now, I think the number one thing in our lives is how can we remain flexible? We had decided to jumpstart our journey by moving into a small 22-foot trailer. Mostly what we were looking to do is achieve max flexibility. And by doing this, we eliminated all these extra costs that we didn't think we could eliminate. We sold all of our stuff. We were inspired by this documentary called The Minimalist. I think that's what it was called, or Minimalism. We ended up selling the majority of our stuff, 80 90% of our stuff, which is such a gratifying experience. I recommend it to anyone. Really get a sense of what you need versus what you want. So we sold all of our stuff and we moved into this really small space with our two kids and it absolutely jump-started our savings rate. When it comes to feeling stuff in a budget, sometimes it just means staying flexible. And that can mean something as small as changing the type of phone you have, you know, and not being stuck on having an iPhone or this new model. Or it can mean big stuff like, you know, moving into a smaller space. Maybe it's not as extreme as a trailer, but it could be a smaller apartment or uh, a different city. So flexibility is key when you're trying to get ahead in this category. What initially inspired you most in this topic and why? Well, there are a lot of people that inspire me in this topic and you guys, Ellen and Andrew, are, are some of them. But I would say the one, if there was one singular moment I could put my finger on, it would be when we had our second child and my wife, Josefa, really felt this draw to be with them all the time, to be their full-time mom, except that we didn't feel like we could afford it. And so that really, put things into context, and we started to make different decisions to try to allow that to happen. One of the things that I would say, intentionality. There's this amazing interview I heard with a guy named Dominic Cotuccio. It really inspired me. It was all about being intentional with all these decisions we make. When it came down to it, my wife and I were both working full-time jobs, except that we weren't being intentional with our money. When we put things down on paper, we started to make our own budget, figure out what we really needed as opposed to what we just spent our money on. We found that we actually started saving more, putting more away in a bank account on one income than as if we had two. So 
intentionality is huge. And that moment, I think, really opened our eyes to this idea that we didn't want to allow poor decision making or unintentionality dictate the type of life we had. Instead, we felt like being intentional meant we could start designing this future that we wanted for ourselves. So after you get out of debt and begin saving, start a retirement fund and invest. We personally use Vanguard.com. Take a financial calculator quiz. Calculate how much you want to live off of in retirement. Multiply that annual amount by 25 to see how much you will need to have saved. Then plug in the numbers into the Dave Ramsey Retirement Calculator to see how long it will take you to retire. Adjust the savings rate if you want to retire earlier. Lastly, work hard. Working hard reaps success. Ultimately, financial freedom in the world that we live in today comes down to choices, hard work, and a little bit of financial savvy. So I hope this information helps you, and I'm going to put the resources down below for you to check out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video. Oh, and definitely check out that podcast called Choose FI. I already got one. Take two. Uh.